Hey, hey, hey! Glad to meet you. Welcome to the Kingdom Culture Center. You know, I, before I go into this next continuation of immorality among brothers and sisters, I just want you to know that don't embrace the word. I trust God's word. I listen to it. And I mentioned it in one of my earlier sessions. I listened to the, the Constitution on CD. And I run, take to the word. And as God deal with me to write another article, I find I get stronger. I eat it. I eat the word. My spirit eats it up. It keeps me strong. I don't concern many of you just little babes, but you should stay in the word. But let me continue on about this immorality among brothers and sisters. See, like I said, I, the world you expect that. But all those who claim you know the Lord and you, 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 you shout and dance, you, you put all that aside because, you know, <laughs> uh, sacrifices without obedience is nothing. You have to be obedient to God's word. Now, I'm going to go on in, uh, excuse me, in the ninth verse of the fifth chapter of Second of First Corinthians. I have written you, this is Paul, my brother Paul speaking, and, you know, to know he went through this gives me encouragement because he stayed focused on his purpose. I have written to you in my letter not to associate with sexual immor sexually immoral people. You know what I'm talking about. Friends with benefits. And you claim to know the Lord. And why, well, uh, hey, if you, if, if you so that horny and that, that, that burning up with passion, then Paul states here in, in this very, uh, in this very uh, book uh, of Corinthians, led to Corinthians, he says it's better to marry than to burn. And see, we have a problem with that too. Because some of us, even though we get married, have somebody on the side. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I have to confess. I have a girlfriend. I have a wife. I have a best friend. I have a lover. And the thing is, she's all wrapped up in one. She's a great helper. But she's all wrapped up in one. This is what you, I want you to understand. If you're in God's word, the Holy Spirit will guide you. He'll lead you. He'll strengthen you. He'll build you up. The times when you think there's no one's there, he will be there for you. But you have to humble yourself and follow his leadership. Remember, God, the Lord Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are one. God and his word are one. He doesn't do one thing and, do, and turn around and implement something else. He's one. Now let us go on. The 10th verse, he says, not all meaning the people, not all, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or he greed or the greedy and swindlers or adulterers. In that case, you would have to leave this world. In other words, what he was saying is, if, if, if everybody was like that, don't we have to leave this world? But he's speaking to us, those who claim to be, who know the Lord. You're kingdom citizens. God gave you a purpose in life. The only way, and I can't tell you your purpose, but I do know this, that the purpose that God has given you, it will glorify him. I, I, I'm going to reiterate that. The purpose that God has created you for will glorify him. If you design, he give you a gift to play basketball. Get closer to him and he'll show you how playing basketball will glorify him. Your life. You see, the basketball player, the football player, the baseball player, the tennis player, all of those who know God's word and embrace the concept of the kingdom, I'm going to tell you something. That will radiate from you because the Holy Spirit will draw. I want you to understand something. You know, when you get the Holy Spirit in your life, Jesus didn't go out looking for people to come. He went 
they came to him. Are you feeling? The people, look at the four Gospels. And you'll find that each time the people came to him, it was immoral. It was leaders. It was a woman that was adulterer at the well. He just went to get some water. <laughs> and put a little, 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 little country twang to it. He went to get some water. And when the conversation was over, see, that's the way. When the Holy Spirit leads you, when you finish talking to someone, you leave them convicted. Better than what they were. You leave them thinking. I always say, no matter what I write, if I can get you to think, I've accomplished something. You know, because in this world, many people don't think. You ask the average young man today, when was the last book he read? He couldn't tell you. My wife said, uh, ask him what last cereal box. They don't even read cereal boxes. I see everybody's glued to their iPhone. You see, when you study and you read God's word, and, and I want, I have to tell you this, Get, bear with me for a minute. Do you know why God told Adam, he gave, and, and you check it out for yourself, he didn't tell Eve, he gave Adam the commandment, do not eat of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. Do you know why he said that? Oh, let me give you that. Because the only knowledge you need is the knowledge of the Word of God. Everything else is man-made or has already been applied down here in history. That's the knowledge. I'm going to say something to you. You cannot resolve a problem on the same level that it was created. That's why you need the Word of God because the Word of God is kingdom knowledge and He'll give you revelation knowledge. Little by little, by little. If you want to know, I'm not talking about religion. Throw religion out the way. Religion is the greatest hindrance to the kingdom. It's the greatest hindrance. People are dying right and left over religion. Did you know Paul had the same problem? Some were saying, I follow Apollos. And some said, I follow Barnabas. I follow Paul. Some even said, I follow Jesus. Now, let me share something with you. Listen. They took up John the Baptist, AME Zion, Catholicism, Church of God in Christ, all these religions, Jehovah Witness, Church of God, All of these supposed to have the foundation of God's constitution, better known to many years as the Bible. But yet they go under all of this. All of the seven-day Adventists, they go over all of this. What happened to the word of God? They put names on, I'm faithful to my religion. Throw that out the window. What about obeying God's word? The Baptist, Southern Baptist, you know, down here in the South, where I reside at the present time, you can ride five, you can go one mile, and this is no exaggeration because exaggeration is a lie to the truth. You can go one mile, and within that one mile, you will come across at least 40 different churches. Some of them are the same. Why? Why? Everybody wants their own thing. Nobody wants to humble to the word of God. You know, sir, thank you, Jesus. See, I don't, you know, a lot of times I, I try to refrain myself from speaking in tongues because you think, you think, hey, this dude is going crazy. It's kingdom language. Paul said the same thing. He says, hey, if you speak in tongues, you're speaking unto God. You're speaking unto God. You're edifying. 
So nobody else gonna know about it. No one else gonna know about it, know what you're saying. But embrace God's word. It's simple. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the next session. It's really simple. Until next time. Thank you.